everyone. I am showing you a end-to-end -end scenario for Hyperledger Fabric driven from a client written with the Java SDK. The scenario itself is that we will create a channel, we'll join peers to that channel, then we'll install a chain code, we'll instantiate that chain code, we'll invoke it, and then we'll query the chain code. Uh, we will do it twice, we will create two channels and run the same scenario on each. Uh, the environment that I'm using consists of two peers, uh, one orderer running solo, and one Fabric CA service to create the certificates that we need. The channel configuration itself is a test one uh, created via the config TS chain tool, and I'm using the CA certificates from the default MSP. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, the project is Fabric SDK Java on Garrett, and you'll find me on the chat hyperledger.org and specifically the Fabric SDK Java channel, and my user ID is Tuan D. So the first thing we want to do is to start up all the peers and the orders and whatnot. Um, I have created uh, Docker images for all of them, and we will just start them off by running Docker Compose. And I'm also running all the Fabric components on the Vagrant. The SDK itself is running locally on my machine. And we'll wait a couple seconds for Fabric CA to come up, and we're set. So again, as you see, we are running Fabric CA, one orderer, and two peers. Now, the test case is it's written as a JUnit test case. You can run it uh, from the command line, or like here, running it from an IDE. In this case, I'm running Eclipse. So we'll start off by running the tool first. And we'll let all the uh, messages go by. Um, you'll notice that some of these messages in green are coming from gRPC. Uh, we will shut those down once we get into production. Uh, the, the lines in white are coming from the end-to-end -end test case. Okay. And as you see, we finished with one chain. And now we're starting to run again with a different chain. And the reason that sometimes we have a lag between some of these commands is that we are actually waiting for the event to come back from the peer before we go on to the next one. Uh, you don't have to run that way. You can just uh, send the request off and then wait on another thread. OK, so now we're done. Uh, let's walk through some of the output a little bit. So you can see here that we're starting with chain foo. Uh, we're creating the, the install proposal. And we're sending it to two different peers. Again, this is the same transaction ID we're going to both places. And we get two responses back. And then after that, we send the instantiate. And we are running basically example 02. And again, we're sending it to both peers, and we get back two responses. Okay. Once we finished instantiating, we then send off an invoke, and this is basically just moving some value from A to B. And again, we're sending it. With, since this is a proposal, we're sending it both peers to get back their endorsement. And again, we get two endorsement back. And we do verify both the status and the signature from each of the peer. So once we get the endorsement, then we send the transaction to the order. Okay. So now that we are finished with the invoke, we now send the query to the chain code. And we verify that we're returning back the right thing. Uh, some of these messages are from a chain set that has not been merged yet. Um, this, these are queries to the query system chain code, and I can show you those in a different presentation. Again, we repeat the process 
by creating a different chain and go through the same scenario. Um, install is substantiate. And we don't have to do install this time because we already installed it on the peer itself. So we're instantiating for this channel. We invoke and we query. And that's what the scenario ends. And again, since the scenario is run as a JUnit test case, it's actually part of the continuous integration test that's run every time that we do a build. And you can run it from inside Eclipse, like I mentioned, or you can run it from the command line. Okay. Let's look at the code and see what it does. So this is the code. Um, you see that the first thing we do is some SDK setup. Uh, we have an example key value store that we just use as a, as a Java serialization file. Uh, we also set a crypto suite. This is equivalent to the BCCSP uh, from the Fabric Peer. And we set a connection to Fabric CA. And then we enroll ourselves. Uh, we're using the usual admin, admin PW secret. And then we run two chains, one for foo and one for bar. And this is how we run the scenario. The first thing we do is install the chain code. So every communication between the SDK and the peer is in the form of a, of a proposal request. That's why you see the term proposal in a lot of these calls. Okay, once we have done the install, we then do the instantiate. Um, you notice that we have a, a test endorsement policy. It basically says that anyone from the default group um, can instantiate this chain code. And here's the send, the instantiation proposal. And so after we've gotten back the endorsement, we send the transaction, the instantiation transaction to the order. Once we have the chain code instantiated, we can now send the invoke transaction. You notice this then apply method call. Um, we use the Java in completable future class to wait for the event coming back from the event hub telling us that a transaction has been committed. And you don't have to run this way. Uh, you can just send the transaction and then wait on another thread for the event to come back. Or another thread you can uh, query the blockchain directly. And now that we've done the invoke, we now do the query and go through the same process. And that's the scenario from beginning to end. Again, if you have any questions, um, just go on Rocket Chat chat-ledger.org, and specifically the Fabric SDK Java channel. And we'll be there uh, to answer any questions. Okay, and that's the end of this presentation. Okay, thank you.